Beloved brothers and sisters, our theme or topic is faith dimension. Faith dimension. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I want us to read Galatians chapter 3, verses 2, and then 5 to 7. Um, but our text is really from verse 11. And it says very simply, Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. It says very simply, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The full verse says, but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith faith. There are a number of scriptures, uh, Bible verses that also uh, corroborate this verse. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, Romans chapter 1 verse 17 uh, says the same thing. The just shall live by faith. So you just note those down. Now a Bible reading. Galatians Chapter 3, we'll read verses 2, 5 to 7. Let's read it together. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Verse 5. Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. I take that uh, verses 6 and 7 again. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. How many of us claim we are children of Abraham? And you can see there that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, it's easy for us to say, I am a child. I am a son of Abraham. I am a child of God. But this important aspect of godliness, of godly life, faith, is something that many have played down on. And God will help us to rekindle that fire and to have the right focus. Beloved, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And actually, Nobody can be saved without faith. So faith is very, very important. Faith is very, very important. You remember Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, that often people quote, but let's pay attention to it again. Look at it. It said, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Can we underline every word there? The simple salvation that we all claim we have is only possible by faith. And that's why the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible for you to live the life God expects you to live, to fulfill all that God wants you to fulfill. 
without faith. And so faith is very important. And that's why we want to look at faith. Last theme that we looked at was a trial of faith. And we touched a bit on faith, merely measuring the degree of faith. And now we want to look deeper and exhort ourselves on the subject of faith. One key question people often ask is, how do I develop faith? How do I grow in faith? And sometimes this faith subject becomes um, something that uh, looks as though it is mysterious. Oh, but the Bible makes us to understand it better. It is simple. I always say, if you want to learn something and learn it well, refer to the expert. For example, if you want to learn how to worship God and worship God well, worship God according to knowledge and according to God's own standard, then go to two principal um, characters in the Bible. Number one, David. David in the Bible. David understood worship. And then number, number two, go to John. Both in his book, the book of John, whether the synoptic gospel, the first John, second John, third John, and then to crown it all, the revelation of Jesus Christ as recorded by John or written by John. So then you will understand worship. So in like manner, when you want to understand faith, go to Paul, the apostle. The one whom Jesus Christ gave the revelation of the mystery of God and of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. And so that's why we've taken our text from one of the letters of Paul, Galatians chapter 3. We've read verses 2 and then 5 to 7. And our text is... Galatians chapter 3, verse 11b. They just shall live by faith. We want to emphasize the importance of the word and the spirit of God in developing faith. The importance of the word and the spirit of God in developing and building faith. So note that. I want to make some categorical statements. Number one, that we are in the dispensation of faith. We are in the dispensation of faith. Number two, that faith is greater and better than logic and sensual knowledge. Faith is greater and better, far, far greater and better. There is no comparison than logic and sensual knowledge. So, sensual knowledge comes by the observation. In fact, you probably wouldn't uh, have paid attention to the fact that science, just keeping it simple is by the observation of physical events using our sensual or senses. Let's put it that way. You have your eyes, you have your ears, you have your nose, you have your feelings, body. So we observe our world, and by those observations, we develop 
and continue to grow what forms our logic and our sensual knowledge. Faith is far greater, higher, better than all that. However, faith does not imply that you shouldn't use your sensual knowledge because we use our sensual knowledge to interact with our physical world. And that's why we're talking about faith dimension, faith dimension. So when we are talking about dimensions in the physical world, dimensions in the physical world, you can talk about one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions, four dimensions. We have the dimension of length. We have the dimension of length and width. So when we're talking about two dimensions, we're talking about viewing something in the physical world in two dimensions, length and breadth. So most of the picture that you will have are of two dimensions. You just see the face. You can't see the back. You can't see the side. So you only see the face, two dimensions, length and breadth. When we talk about three dimension, 3D, you can hear 3D, 3D. So in the physical or physics, physical world, then we're talking about being able to see it in terms of length, breadth, and height. Those are the three dimensions. You see things in three dimension. You see it length, breadth or width and height. Those are the three dimensions. Now, when we begin to talk about four dimensions, we now go into the dynamic phase. As three dimensions fix the static, we go into the dynamic phase. So the fourth dimension is time. We will get to look at those things that are in three dimensions in the fourth dimension. How do they change with time? How do they change with time? Glory be to God. Fourth dimension. I know now that we talk about faith dimension, somebody would say, okay, faith is the fifth dimension. I wouldn't reduce faith to that level because faith doesn't sit in this space. And that's why I'm telling us that faith is far greater and better and has no comparison whatsoever to logic and sensual knowledge, which is the level of these four dimensions that I've mentioned. Let's just look at Mark chapter 11 and look at verses 22 and 23. And then we'll bring this together and begin to move in the faith dimension. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23. Verse 22 says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Lord, many things have been brought into this world. Many great achievements have been done by faith. And we are enjoying it without realizing that this has been the work of faith. Actually, as human beings, we are faith beings. We are faith beings. And we do a whole lot of things by faith. But usually, we come short in going to the real understanding and realm of the realm of faith dimension. 
For example, a young lady who says I do to a young man does not know anything that will happen about that young man in future. She just feels good about it. She just says, mm, my heart is warm towards him. Oh, he is like this, he is like that to me. But beyond those physical attributes, I have a conviction in my heart that this is okay. And sometimes it works out well, sometimes it doesn't work out well. Oh, the one of the doctors treating the patient is always the one that impresses me most. We go to the doctor and he asks you, what is wrong? And you tell him, and then the doctor prescribes some medicine for you. You go and you take the medicine. You have absolutely no idea. You were not there when they formed the compound. In fact, they will call such names, big names that ought to be scary, but it doesn't bother us. We just have faith that what the doctor prescribes will be okay. And we'll go take it and feel better. I mean, though there have been cases of uh, some wrong prescriptions and people have also had trouble with that. But beloved, the faith in God that the Bible talks about here, there is no wrong prescription. Unfortunately, many have not spent time to understand learn and grow in faith dimension. Faith rules over everything that we do. Faith is the way in which we receive God's blessings. We receive by faith. And so the scripture I read earlier, Ephesians chapter 2, Verse 8, it says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. So you have been saved through faith. And that not yourself, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. If you want to receive greater blessings, mightier, bigger, beyond just the physical observation that your sensual and logical knowledge brings to you, then come to the faith dimension, brothers and sisters. Faith dimension is the dimension of the spirit of God. It is the dimension of the spirit of God. Grace is available, I always say, and let me emphasize it again, just as we have read there. Grace is available. The grace of God is available to you, is available to me, is available to us. But we receive grace by faith. So faith is the operator of grace. Faith operationalizes grace. So to connect back, just illustration of the physical dimension that I talked about, I want to quickly share a picture of the Rainbow Mountain that we have heard of. I believe you have heard of the Rainbow Mountain. The Rainbow Mountain. So, the Rainbow Mountain in Peru, the mountain with these beautiful colors. So here you can see, just looking at this picture, you can see it in a two dimension and some sort of three dimension in that you can see the height, you can see uh, the width, you can also see uh, the length to the extent of this picture. Now, 
changes the mountain that you're looking at there. So snow has covered it. So with which eye do you look at this mountain? If you are here at this time with snow covering this mountain, with your knowledge of what is underneath this mountain, you will know that behind the snow that covers this mountain, there is a beautiful color or beautiful colored mountain, isn't it? Just to illustrate, that's even in the sensual level, going with 3D to 4D. When we then come to the dimension of faith, the just shall live by faith. What are we then talking about? I did say that faith is the dimension of the spirit of God. And I want to em emphasize in this the importance of the word and the spirit of God in building faith. So just go from that picture that I've told you now and then just think a moment about what we're talking about faith. Okay. Let's read about our father Abraham, and then we will do a, a little discussion from that perspective. And that's where we will leave it today. So we may have uh, room for any other discussion. Glory be to God. So Romans chapter four, Romans chapter four. Go with me to Romans chapter four. I'll read verse 1, then I'll jump to verse 13. He said, what then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Verse 3, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. I jump then to verse 13, verse 13. Let's read from verse 13. It says, for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Righteousness of faith, know that. 14, for if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of no effect. 15, because the law brings out wrath, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. 16, therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Let's take that again. <laughs> Let's take that again. I want to start from verse 16. He said, therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. It is of faith that it might be according to grace. As I always say, faith is a leveler. It brings everyone to a common level. And faith is the operator of grace. He said, so that the promise, so when you operationalize grace by faith, he says, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, that is the Jews, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations 
in the presence of him who believed God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Now, here is the point. Remember, the four dimension we just illustrated. You are standing there seeing a mountain covered with snow. But because in four dimension you have seen that same mountain, underneath, what is underneath, you have seen it when the snow melted during summer, that this is a beautiful colored, rainbow colored mountain. While standing there with snow covering it, you know and you know that beneath this white covering of snow, this mountain has a beautiful rainbow color. And so here Abraham was, and God said to him, I have made you a father of many nations. At the time when Abraham had absolutely no child, this is the point. So, faith. Abraham believed God. Just like you who would have stood there, having known that this mountain that is covered with snow right now, underneath it is a rainbow colored mountain. With no doubt at all, this is what we are talking about. And so, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That scripture we read, let's go back there. Galatians chapter three. So that's what Paul was speaking here. In that verse two, look at verse two again, it says, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Hearing of faith. You go to verse five, verse five, again emphasize. He said, therefore he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing? of faith, hearing of faith, hearing. So Abraham, God said to Abraham, God called Abraham, the father of many nations. When Abraham was without a child, yet God called him the father of many nations. You see, God, who calls? Did you see that? Those things which do not exist as though they did. God is a faith God. So faith sees the invisible. He sees the invisible. Faith sees the invisible. Faith sees with the eyes of the spirit, like I said before. It is only the spirit that knows the things of God, what God has ordained. And what God has ordained, brothers and sisters, is revealed in the word of God. So faith sees the invisible. And these invisible things of God are revealed in the word of God and by the Spirit of God. Note that. And so Abraham was there. The present circumstance, the present situation was totally different. Yet God said to him, I have made you the father of many nations. Abraham looked at himself. Look around, there is no child. He was about a hundred years old. 
the wife was already past the age of giving birth. God, he knew God, who God is. He knew that God is loving. He knew that God is truth. He knew that God is omnipotent, all-powerful. He can do whatever he chooses to do. He knew that God is faithful. He knew that God is merciful. He knew that God is willing to do good. He knew that God is all-knowing. And so, by the eyes of faith, he saw beyond the fourth dimension. Hallelujah. He looked beyond the presence. He looked beyond time. He looked into God. Because faith sits in God. And so that's why Jesus said, to his disciples, in that Mark chapter 11, verse 22, have faith in God. For as surely I say to you, whoever, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, it will be done. He will have whatever he says. But this is only possible when you have faith where in God. For it is in God that the whole possibilities exist. And now, God has given us his son, Jesus Christ through whom we have access to all the blessings and the provision of God. That in the name of Jesus, whatever we ask of God, we receive. And so we are to pay attention to the word of God and listen to the spirit of God. And that's what we're going to be doing. So we have the eyes of faith that sees beyond the present. Faith sees beyond the present. I say faith sees beyond the present. I don't know what your present looks like. Your present may be that you are sick. Your present may be that you are oppressed. Your present may be that you are worried, you are troubled by one circumstance or the other. Faith sees beyond the fourth dimension of length, width, height, and time. Faith sees in God what God sees. Faith sees beyond the present circumstance. Faith sees beyond the present events. Faith sees beyond the present time. So there was Abraham without a child in the present circumstance. Without a child or possibility in the physical of having a child in the present events looking at his age, without a child, if you consider time factor, because he was about 100 years old, like some young women or young men, they may look at themselves and say, when am I going to marry? What has God said? What has God said? What has God said? Come to the dimension of faith and received by the word of God and the spirit of God, the promise of God, for it is sure it will be fulfilled. Glory be to God. Faith 
sees in the eyes of God. Faith sees beyond the present circumstance, events, or times. Just one example, one example. If you look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, is also what is in Psalm 90, verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible says God counts a day as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Why you have to look into the word of God? It's only in the word. And by the revelation of the spirit of God, that you can look in the eyes of faith, which is the eyes of God. Look at this scripture. When the spirit takes this scripture and breaks it down for you in your time, your circumstance, your event, you will come to realize something like this. God counts a day as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. This is the word of God. This scripture expresses the infinite power of God and timelessness. Hallelujah. It shows that God can do in a day what can take a thousand years to accomplish. Hallelujah. So if you're anchoring in God, no matter how long it takes, you know that God's promise will come to pass. You know that uh, no man has lived here for a thousand years. So how much more yourself? If God can accomplish in a day what may take a thousand years. And for him, he also sees through time. That's what this scripture also means. That God can accomplish in a day what may take a thousand years. And he can also, or he also sees through time. He sees through time. His infinite power, and he is timeless. So with this, you can see with the eyes of faith through the scripture that it does not matter how long it takes in your life and my life, God will perform his word and promise. And so let it be to you, so let it be to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it is written that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. What he has said, he will do it. What he has promised, he will bring it to pass. And so with this scripture, living in you, becoming your reality, you know that whatever God has promised you, he will do it. This is just giving us example of how we walk in the dimension of faith. We're going to look at many more, but I want you to take up the challenge today that you're going to study the word of God. You're going to believe God by his word. And you're going to pay attention to the revelation that the spirit of God gives to you by the word of God. God bless you, brothers and sisters. We'll pause here. And we want to pray. Whatever your present circumstance may be, God will touch you. I just want to encourage you to just get the understanding, the revelation, just like you have heard me. By God's Spirit, speak on 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. I'm sure you would have been reading that scripture and wondering. But well, when I read it, the Spirit of God taught me what I've just spoken to you. And that's why I'm able to say to you and say to myself, it doesn't matter how long it takes in your life and in my life. God will perform his word and promise. 
in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Agree with me according to God's word. But the word of God says, if two of you shall agree concerning anything that you ask, it will be done for us that we ask. And so agree with me. You open your mouth and speak out whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation, as we heard there, he said, he who works miracles, verse five, therefore he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? I believe you have heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Let us pray. Raise your voice to heaven and tell him, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word and for your promise for my life, your promises, your promises for my life. Thank you, Lord. And by faith, I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, tell him that thing you are receiving now. Tell him what you are receiving. Oh, I receive it, I receive it. Oh, you receive the celebration of that, your daughter. You receive the celebration of your children the weddings of your sons and daughters, you receive the breakthroughs, you receive the victory over that matter, over that situation. Oh, you receive the healing right now by the stripes of Jesus. For so it is written by the stripes of Jesus, by his stripes. You are healed right now. Right now, receive. I receive the termination of every oppression. And I silence every force of oppression in my life and in your life and in our families. For it is written, no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I shall condemn. So I condemn every oppression in my life and in my family by faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God. Go ahead, go ahead, and go ahead and just pray. Pray the prayer of faith. Pray the prayer of faith. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Glory be to your holy name. Let's bring our prayer to a close as we agree. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our Heavenly Father will thank you for your word that you have given to us. We thank you for the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every other name. The only name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. The name that we ask anything and we receive. And so we have asked in agreement by faith. Let all the promises of God, the blessings of God according to the original covenant that our God, our Father, with Abraham, our father, that we have come into through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that in blessing, God will bless us. In multiplication, he will multiply us. Let all the promises of God be our portion in Jesus' name. Father God, by your spirit, help us all to walk by faith as it is written. They just shall live by faith. And I pray, let the Holy Spirit teach every one of us the faith dimension, even beyond what we have spoken today. And all glory be to you in Jesus' mighty name. All that your children have asked now, Lord God Almighty, let all be done. The sick be healed. 
and every desire that your children have expressed by faith in the name of Jesus, receive answer now. Thank you, Almighty God, and let all glory be to you in the name of Jesus. That brother, that sister, whoever has been struggling and not able to stand by faith in righteousness, Lord God Almighty, I pray right now, the grace, the strength, the victory over sin in any way, in any form, be granted him, be granted her, for we are saved through grace by faith. Thank you, Almighty God. All glory be to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. In case there are questions, there are clarification, feel free, open the line, and you may ask, what was that thing that resonated with you? Let's hear. Feel free, open the line. Yes, Brother Charles. <laughs> okay, so yeah. the... The uh, rainbow mountain illustration, I think um, it drove the point home for me. That's rainbow mountain illustration, meaning that even if you don't see it, that, that, that faith, most times you may not see it with the visible eyes, but then with your inner eyes of the spirit, you're able to see through the physical and believe that it is there. And because it's there and that you believe it and that God has said it, it eventually comes to pass. So that was a strong word for me. Amen. Ah, you have seen mm -hmm. my expo. Mm -hmm. You have seen my expo. You have seen my expo. John chapter 20, there's no point keeping it. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 27. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. 29, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Beloved, the dimension of faith is not seeing with the eyes, not these physical eyes at all. In fact, you are not to see. <laughs> you are to believe. But I believe is with the eyes of faith because the eyes of faith sees what God, what is in God by his mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. Yes, please go ahead. Go mm -hmm. ahead, Sister Comfort. <laughs> well, brother, our pastor, brother, uh, thank you so much. It's been it's been amazing. It is deeper, deeper like your brother Tara always said. This is deeper than scratching the surface. So believing, it's not just people, I will see people say, God can do anything. Yes. What, what is that faith that you have to know that it is possible? So you have hit it so hard today. Faith is greater, is better, is higher than logic and sensual knowledge. Mm -hmm. So even though we also use our senses, we faith, so combining faith with our senses, ah, mm -hmm. we see four dimension plus one. Faith dimension. Glory yeah. to God. So it's, it's uh, like, I, I, in fact, I was singing the song I sat, that I sang in the first, when we started this. Behold the mountain of the Lord, mm -hmm. where the truth will be taught, where God will teach us his word in spirit and in truth. So uh, thank you so much. I think we are moving. This is Thank God's you. word moving. The spirit is moving. Amen. It is going to the higher and greater height. Thank Amen. you so much. Thank mm. you. Thank you, beloved sister. So we'll, we'll leave it there. God bless you. And the spirit of God continue to teach you, teach me, teach us this truth and cause us to grow to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. 
That's our standard. Christ Jesus is our standard. God bless you and bye-bye.